Checkbox, checkbox. Checkboxes. Are you interested in making your checkboxes much more lively and much more powerful? Well, Quasar has your back. So in this video, we're going to talk about exactly just that. And in the end of the video, we're going to show you how to design your checkboxes in a much more nicer and cleaner way. So, excited? Well, check this out. Before we begin, first let us ask the question. So, what is a checkbox, right? So, a checkbox is basically an element that allows you to toggle the state of a certain choice. For example, ordering a burger online, let's say. So, imagine a checkbox that says, would you like to add a mayo? And then, there's an element of a checkbox beside that question. So, if you select the checkbox and then you toggle it to a check state, meaning a true, that means you would like to add mayo, right? And then if you remove the check mark, that means you don't want to add mayo, for example. So one in one of the ways of implementing a checkbox in a real life scenario. So how do you implement a checkbox using the Quasar way? Here in our code base, you can see that we have the a default uh, state, right? So imagine there's nothing going on right here. So in this case, we need to first add, again, the div. So the div is the container for the element in order to make things much better to look at. So now that we have the div, how do you implement a checkbox? The basic implementation of a checkbox is simply adding a queue, then checkbox, like that. And then we need to add the model. Let's say add something or is happy, for example. So is happy. And then let's add the form data. Oh, no, 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 no. Form data that is happy. So something like that for now. And then we're going to add the form data value below. So let's add the is happy choice here. So for now, let's set it to false. And then now that we have that, we simply need to add now the label, right? So by default, uh, let's first show you how it looks like. The checkbox, when set, looks just like this. So it's just nothing but a bland looking type of checkbox. It's just a toggle on and off. So as you can see, you can toggle it on and off. So it works like a charm in a sense. In order to add more information regarding this checkbox, let's add a label for it. So in this example, we have a checkbox, right? So let's add a label to that checkbox. So you simply need to add the label property right here. So not here, but rather here. So label, are you happy? Question mark. So that is how you add a label to your checkbox. By doing so, there's now a label in your example right here. So in this case, you now have a guiding question about the checkbox itself. So something like that. Let's say the label is, would you like some mayo? For example, right? So what you're going to get is that exactly. So that is how you add labels to your chat boxes. So let's say you want to move your uh, label to the left, right? So that is one way also. So you can implement that as well by simply adding the left dash label. Once you add that, you're going to get a label which is positioned on the left side. So as you can see in the example, it is placed on the left side. Aside from positioning the labels themselves, you can also add some colors to your checkbox. For example, let's say the red, a blue, green, or whatever color you wish to add. So it allows you to customize your checkbox in a colorful way. In order to do that, we simply need to head over to our application code, and then let's add the color property, right? So. Once you have the color property, you simply add now the color that you wish to use. Let's say in this example, let's make it uh, green. No, it's not green. Say green, right? So green. Now that we have a green checkbox, what you're going to get is something like this. So you have a green checkbox. So it's colored green, right? So it's now colorful. Aside from coloring, you can add the dense property or the dark property. It depends upon the needs of your application. So in case you want to do just that exactly, 
simply need to add the dense property. So let's remove this for now. So by removing this one and then adding the dense property, what you're going to get is a much more compact checkbox. To demonstrate, let's switch it between the two. So as you can see, it has a lot of space. If I add the dense property, it's going to compress a lot further. So dense property allows you to compress your content and allows you to save space for those types of scenarios where you don't have that much space for your checkboxes. So aside from dense, you can also set it to dark mode. So in order to do that, you simply need to add a dark property. By doing so, what's going to happen is your checkbox is going to look uh, uh, like a color white. Why? Because in dark mode, usually the background is in a dark color, right? It can be a dark red, dark blue, dark green, or another shade of gray, for example. In those types of scenario, your elements must be colored in a different contrast. So in this case, Quasar uses the white color. That's why we can't see the checkbox itself. But if I click here, you will see that we have the green color. So aside from the dark background, you can also set the size of your checkboxes. Let's say you want it to be, let's say, small, medium, or large, for example. You can set that by simply adding the size property. So let's say let's remove these properties for now, and then let's add the size. Let's say let's make it large, just for the sake of examples, right? So as you can see, it's a very big checkbox, like this. So as you can see, it's a large checkbox, right? Aside from those, Quasar also has the functionality of setting an array as the V model for a set of checkboxes. For example, you have four values, for example, and you want those four values to be a checkbox state. So for example, you have the choice of setting any of those four items as true or false. So Quasar supports that kind of scenario. So in order to implement that, you simply need to set your V model into an array. So in this case, instead of the having the typical true or false, you can set an array. So uh, let's say choices. So let's rename this to choices. And then let's, let's set this value to choices. And then simply need to add, or you need to duplicate the V model itself. So by duplicating the V model, it allows you to set multiple values for a multiple set of checkboxes. So would you like some cheese, for example? And then some spice. So in this case, we have three choices, right? So in order to demonstrate how it looks exactly, we're going to display the form data dot choices right here. So going back in our application, you can now see that you have this, right? So once you have that down, we're going to set the value for this one. So let's say mayo, for example. And then let's set this one to cheese. And then let's set this one to, let's say, spice. Now that we have this, what we're going to get is this one. So let's just clean up the code a bit. So here, right in this section right here, you can see the array, right? So Let's say I want to add some mayo, so I set the check to mayo, and you can see that we have the mayo inside the R. Let's say you want to add some spice, so it includes spice inside as well. Let's say you want some cheese as well, so it adds the value itself inside the R. So let's say I don't want, or, I, or rather I changed my mind, I changed my mind, right? So I don't want mayo, I don't want cheese, I just want spice because I like it spicy. So in that example, you can see that we can remove the mayo and the cheese easily. So this uh, or rather this type of scenario is useful for those instances where you need a lot of choices to be set in a specific scenario. For example, options. This is one useful type of feature in that kind of scenario. Aside from the typical true or false, you can also set custom values for your checkboxes. You simply need to add a true value and a false value. To demonstrate, let's go back in our code here, and then let's add another checkbox, just for the sake of example. So let's say Q checkbox, right? So 
we have the V model of uh, check box two. Just for example, you know, let's say we want a form data with hunger. Let's say the true value is yes and the false value is no. So let's add a label, are you hungry? You know, just for the sake of examples. So in this case, we're going to add hunger here as well. So since we set the false value to no, we're going to set here it to no as well to match the values. So it works, right? So in order to display the actual value, let's render the form data itself. So form data that let's say hunger. By doing so, as you can see, it's in a no state right here, right? So it's no. But as soon as I hit the check mark or the checkbox, it sets to yes. So aside from the true or false, which is the default value for a checkbox, you can set custom true and false values for your checkboxes. Are you guys having difficulty so far in implementing this type of components or are you having trouble regarding the checkbox? If you have any or if you have questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. So we will be entertaining your questions and we will try to help you as much as we can. Uh, for your checkbox, let's say you want to add some captions or some specific labels or additional information for your choice. In that example, we can implement that type of scenario as well. So like, much like the radio button type, we can implement that type of style in our chat box as well by simply adding the following. So uh, rather by simply imitating the following type of code. So first we need to create a queue list, right? And then we need to add a queue item. And then inside the queue item, uh, queue item label, we're going to set it to avatar mode. No, 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 no. Oh, rather, queue item section first. Now that we have a queue item section, we're going to add a queue item label. And then we're going to set it to avatar mode. Uh, I think it's not the queue item label. So I think it's the queue item section. Yes. So it's the queue item section. I'm so sorry. So now that we have the queue item section, which is in avatar mode, we're going to add now a queue item label. And then in this part, we're going to add the queue checkbox. Let's say, let's move one of these checkboxes inside of this one. So something like that. Next. Now that we have the checkbox inside of it, we're going to add now another item section. So let's add a queue item label and then let's say mail. So now that we have that item label, let's say let's add another item label. This time it's a caption. It's a caption. And then we're going to ask them this label exactly. So we're going to ask them. So would you like some mail? So if we go back, it's going to look something like this. So you have a checkbox, which is right here, and then you have a label title, and then you have a small caption below that would indicate the choice or would describe the choice itself. So let's say, um, instead of a question, let's say, adds mayo to the food. For example, so in order to add the other items, let's just duplicate this. So we, sim we simply copy this one, we paste it, oh, rather, we grab this one, we paste it down here, and then let's grab the checkbox right here. And then let's replace this checkbox right here. And then we're going to grab the label here and then let's replace the words here. So here, let's replace with cheese as well. And then let's remove 
label. And then lastly, let's do this or let's do it again for the last time for the third option. So in this case, the spice, right? So let's remove this one. And then let's paste it down here. So you now have spice. So let's just capitalize this one and then let's add it here. And then let's remove the label itself. So we remove the label right here. And going back, voila. Now we have a set of choices which has additional descriptive text below those choices. So in case I want mayo, I simply hit the check mark. Let's say I want some cheese, which adds cheese to the food. I simply click the checkbox. Same with spice. And I can uncheck any of these at any point in time. So that is one useful example for setting multiple choices and adding some description to them. So lastly, you can also set the disable property in case you want to disable your items or your checkboxes for a short period of time. So in this case, in order to disable them, you simply need to add the disable property. If I add the disable property right here, like so, as you can see, I cannot click the checkbox anymore. So in, uh, for example, um, let's say there's no more spice. So I need to disable the spice option, right? So that is one way of disabling your checkboxes in case you need that type of functionality. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial video. I hope you have learned something from it as well as you have checked this video out. So if you have any further questions or clarifications, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. If you see that this video has helped you in any way or it has helped you to implement a much better checkbox for your application, please be sure to hit that like as well as to hit that subscribe button in order to get notified of our latest updates. This is Joshua from Pixelate. See you later, Pixelators!